What is up guys, Technicals here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the most common FPGAs for cryptocurrency mining. We're going to compare their performance, their price, the pros, the cons, back and forth. I'd like to keep this series somewhat updated because this is a rapidly developing ecosystem. New miners are always coming onto the market, new bit streams are being dropped, changes take place here and there. We want to keep you updated as quickly as we possibly can as to what might be the best option for you. I'm The Technicals, let's get into it. The Technicals. Before that, this video brought to you by shop.thetechnicals.io. Represent your favorite coin project or just your favorite YouTuber. Link is in the description below. <laughs> oh my god, that's disgusting. Please stop. Alright, and so for this video, I put together this little table here. It's very uh, crude. There's not a ton of information in there. I posted it over on my Twitter. Go check it out. I'm hoping to have community review on it in real time. If something changes, because it's tough to keep up. For Lyra 2Z, for example, there's been like three, four improvements on it so far. It originally started out, I think, 20 or 30 mega hash per second. It's already up to 60 mega hash on the VCU. So first up, let's take a look at the BCU slash VCU 1525. The BCU is essentially a VCU that's been tweaked to make it better for cryptocurrency mining. By Squirrel Research, they ordered it from Xilinx with uh, all these tweaks and modifications on it that make it a little bit better for cryptocurrency mining. It's a good option because it's in the same price range as the VCU, although with the VCU, you do get the uh, fan that's on the back of the card, that reference style blower fan. Uh, so that's going to give you a little bit of an edge over the passive cooler. But as you've seen in the previous videos on the FPGA here on my channel, uh, you really need to explore options uh, aside from just regular forced air over the heat sink. If you really want to bring those temperatures down and really get the most out of your card, you're going to need to explore water cooling or immersion. So on this table you can see that there are only a handful of algorithms on which all cards or most cards are performing uh, on so you can get sort of a, a comparison. Uh, the Black Miner F1, for instance, does many other algorithms more than the VCU or BCU, at least that I've seen thus far. Again, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot more than one or two people writing bit streams. There's maybe five or six as far as I know. Um, so these things change and they update all the time. VCU, BCU, this is going to offer you the most amount of development support. So you can expect new bit streams and support to come out on that platform. Now, I don't know much of, I don't know anything about writing bit streams. So I'm not sure how that translates over to the CVP-13, the Black Miner F1, if the bitstream written for the BCU also can be, you know, slightly tweaked to go onto other cards, or if it requires some sort of fundamental uh, change in the in the foundation or the structure of writing the bitstreams. I'm just not aware of that. However, when you look at the people who are writing bitstreams, almost all of them that I've seen are writing them for the BCU slash VCU. So if you get into one of these cards, you can expect that when new bitstreams are being written, or when they uh, are released, they're going to be available on the BCU VCU 1525 series. So that is a positive if you're looking for the hottest, freshest bit streams to get onto these algorithms right away as soon as they come out, then a BCU VCU is probably going to offer you that over the other ones. The cons, the price. It's about $4,000 still. I've seen it a little bit higher, a little bit lower than that. Other cons, like I said before, it requires modifications. If you really want to get the best out of the card, you need to bring those temperatures down, and that's going to entail adding liquid cooling on it or immersion cooling. You're also going to need to explore undervolting the card. Now, the BCU kind of sort of does this. It comes undervolted when you buy it in, but for certain algorithms, you're going to need to manually step that voltage down on the card and you're going to have to do that with power play you're going to have to get the uh, the undervolt dongle see my previous video here where we make that undervolt dongle there's also a guide over on Zethron site and finally the biggest con is complexity you're going to have to uh, set up the card to mine via Vivado or uh, some other type of program I'm not sure if there's anything outside Vivado if you're in Linux when you're doing this and using the all mine shell which I have not experimented with um, I don't believe you need to use Vivado. I think it's a self-contained sort of thing. I'm hoping to create some content on that here soon. But regardless, it's not a plug-and-play operation. It is not nearly as easy as setting up a GPU to mine. You just download a forked CC miner. You put in your configuration string. You play with your, uh, your undervolt and your overclocks and things like that, and you're off to the races. Uh, with the FPGA, you're going to have to download a whole host of drivers, uh, specialized software to do it, hook it up the right way, monitor it, make sure that you're not getting out of range, and then you're off to the races there. It requires a lot more, but the results, if you look at some of the comparisons versus a 1080 Ti, the uh, the performance numbers are incredible. Next up is the Black Miner F1. Now, we did a video on the Black Miner F1. You can see it 
here. Links in the description below. Um, this originally was announced on a Bitcoin talk thread. Uh, a lot of people said that, oh, this is a scam. It's a cash grab because the company was never heard from before. Uh, the miner came out. It seemed a little bit too good to be true because it was like, you know, a plug and play FPGA sort of thing in an ASIC. Uh, but we saw people starting to take delivery of it. And so I saw that and I felt, you know, well, it's probably okay. I went ahead and got one and it works. Uh, we did the video on it. We posted some initial performance. And uh, we, while we haven't really explored the comparison between the VCU and the Black Miner F1, you can very easily find the performance numbers on Hash Altcoin's website and really anywhere else for the BCU VCU. One of the main selling points, or several of the main selling points of the Black Miner F1, is its price. It's about half as much as a VCU BCU. It's a, like a third of the cost of a CVP 13. The amount of algorithms that the Black Miner F1 does is way more than I've seen on the BCU VCU. Now I'm sure the BCU VCU uh, is going to be able to mine on XDAG or Skeen or any of the other ones that aren't listed on this table, uh, but I haven't seen them in wide use. I've only seen them on the Black Miner F1. On top of that, the other massive selling point, which I've gone on over and over again, is that it makes it easy. Uh, we're going to have to make this easy for noobs to get in on. No one wants to come in and have this super complex operation to go through to get up and operating on FPGAs. I know a big enthusiast segment of this community and many other communities uh, you think that that's a good rite of passage, that you should have to learn these type of things. I just don't subscribe to that. I think if you make it super duper easy, you're going to get more adoption, you're going to get more money flowing in, it's going to make the community thrive on a high tide, all boats rise. And so that's the main selling point for me for the Black Miner F1 is that it's ease of operation, it's ease to get set up and going. I mean, you're, you're in and mining on this thing in like a couple minutes. It's as easy to operate as an ASIC. The price, very, very low. The downsides, though, is it is somewhat centralized. It's not fully centralized, wherein your hash is moving through hash altcoin servers or anything like that, like we've seen with the Obelisk S1 or some other ASICs that tie into the mothership before they can go out and start hashing. Uh, you're hashing directly on the pool. However, the back end, the, uh, the, the bit streams, they're all coming from hash altcoin. I've not seen them come from anywhere else. I've not seen anyone write them. However, due to the nature of the way that you update the bit streams in the Black Miner F1, you're, you're, you're putting those files into your miner directly. It's not moving through hash altcoin. So I can't help but think that if someone's able to write a bit stream on that, uh, on that platform and that code, whatever it takes to get it on there, then you're going to be able to circumvent hash altcoin altogether, get pit, bit streams that are not put out by hash altcoin and load them directly into your miner and start mining. I've not seen anything to dismiss or say, uh, or give me a reason to believe that that's not possible yet. And so uh, I think that there's a lot of room there and it's not as much, uh, there's a little bit too much concern about the centralization fact of the Black Miner F1 compared to any of the other FPGAs. Finally, the biggest con of the Black Miner F1 is that it's more similar to an ASIC than it is an FPGA in the sense that it cannot be repurposed. Uh, so I've gone on and on about how FPGAs are the best of both worlds. It's got the power of an ASIC, the flexibility of a GPU, and unlike an ASIC, if, uh, if the algorithm forks or something happens to where the ASIC can't no longer hash on that algorithm, uh, ASICs are doorstops, but FPGAs you can reprogram to another bitstream, same with GPUs. With the Black Miner F1, though, it's sort of a purpose built FPGA miner, which in my eyes kind of makes it more like an ASIC than it is an FPGA, uh, with the VCU 1525 in particular. Those existed prior to cryptocurrency mining's need for them. They were being used and they are currently in use for telecom, military, other, you know, enterprise, commercial, industrial grade technology applications. They have a purpose outside cryptocurrency mining. So if something happens to cryptocurrency and you want to sell them, much like your GPUs, you could sell to gamers. Your VCU 1525, you could sell to enthusiasts, companies, the military, I don't know. Uh, the point is, is that you, they have a secondary market. You can sell them to another party and they can use them for something that's not cryptocurrency mining related. You cannot do that with an ASIC. Its purpose is to mine cryptocurrency. Similar in, in, in spirit with the Black Miner F1. Its only purpose, as far as I can see, is mining cryptocurrency. So it makes it more of an ASIC than it is an FPGA. Now, sure, it can be reprogrammed to do other sorts of tasks that are not cryptocurrency related. But if you look at it, you look at the platform, you look at the back end, you look at 
the form factor, this thing is made for it. Now, I'm sure we can retool it and someone's going to be able to do that if they put the time into it doing, you know, telecom applications or whatever. Uh, but right now, if you're looking at it in terms of what's your potential resale value, what's your protection if something happens to cryptocurrency, can I resell this thing like I can a GPU? The Black Miner F1 is not doing so well in that department. Finally, the CVP-13. It's the one I know the least about. I'm trying loosely to get my hands on a review sample. I'm not sure if it's going to happen because these things are really expensive. They're, they're brand new. They are the Ferrari of FPGAs. They are just starting to kind of filter out, but you're paying for it. It's pricey, $6,000. There's also, there's no proven results of this thing. We've not seen many, uh, many people posting results on hash rates on the CVP-13. So it remains to be seen if the, uh, if the numbers being put out actually hold up. There's also the issue of complexity. Now, I've seen that the CVP-13 is being recommended to run on the AllMind shell in Linux. I'm sure that there's going to be Windows function functionality in there as well, similar to the BCU 1525, but again, it remains to be seen, and that I'm confident in saying that it is not going to be a one-click sort of thing. It is going to be as complex as a VCU 1525, if not more. Also, I've seen on Bitware site, they've got some really interesting videos over on their YouTube channel, link to it in the description below. Uh, they seem to be setting theirs up from the ground up to be a, a cryptocurrency mining FPGA and also to be liquid cooled. I've not seen many air cooled examples. They almost entirely are, are liquid cooled with these custom loops, this custom hardware. It's, it's purpose driven for cryptocurrency mining. However, much like the VCU, when you get it, you're not going to just be able to plug it in and start going. You're going to have to explore cooling options. That uh, Bitware has been around. They're a reputable company. So unlike Hash Altcoin, who has not been around for very long, uh, Bitware has, has is here. They have a track record, so you can have some confidence in that they're not just going to evaporate into thin air. Finally, the KU040 or the KU040, however you want to say it. This is a uh, uh, FPGA that is not spoken about very often. It's cheaper. It's on the lower end of the price range. It's about $900. The only performance numbers that I was able to find was on OX Bitcoin, currently getting about 2.4 giga hash. By comparison to VCU 1525, it's around 21 giga hash, so about 10 times as much. However, for $900, there might be a lot of people out there who have maybe a $1,000 budget for an FPGA, but just can't stretch it out to $4,000. That's a lot of money. And so if you're interested in getting into FPGAs, the KU040 may be a good option for you. However, I, 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 would, I would caution getting into one of those because of the lack of development. I don't see a lot of people putting in development time for the KU040. Again, I don't know if the platforms are the same, if the VCU bitstream will carry right over to the KU040. I just don't know. I don't know how much tooling, retooling is required to get it to work on that. And if it is a lot, I don't see a lot of people chomping at the bit to write bitstreams for this cheaper FPGA. We've also seen some other information coming out of the Atom Miner. I've been speaking with Atom Miner here and there, trying to get some information out of them on performance, uh, proven performance, you know, some video or something like that of their miner. They post information on their website about the, the numbers that they anticipate getting. They haven't shipped any. I haven't seen a miner in action. I've not heard from anybody who's had eyes on this thing other than Atom Miner. So proceed with extreme caution in dealing with Atom Miner. However, this was the same story that we saw with hash altcoin and that worked out but again uh, cryptocurrency is plagued with scams not saying atom miner is a scam but you're going to want to proceed with caution because they are promising a product that is inexpensive the, uh, the msrp on this thing is going to be around 500 dollars and it's getting great performance on lots of different algorithms. This could be a good option, a good entry level for many people out there who are interested in FPGA mining, but don't want to spend four or $5,000 on one of these top tier cards. So Adam Miner, I'd love for you to send me a card. I'm glad to send it back once I'm done. I'm, uh, I don't really, I'm not gonna run off and sell it. I don't really need the money that bad. I need the money that bad. But if you'd like to send one over, I'm glad to review it and post the results here for others to see that it's, uh, it actually exists. And again, these are like getting a generation one ASIC over and over again. When new bit streams come out and the coins are, you know, only been GPU or CPU mined previously, you're coming in with a tremendous amount of hash power. In many instances, uh, one FPGA is doing the work of 20, 30, or even more 1080 TIs. We've only seen some initial in, uh, impressions of the X16R algorithm. It's publicly posted, so I can talk about it. We're not sure when it's going to come out, but when it does, uh, the CVP13, for instance, is anticipated to get 500 mega hash on X16R. That's equivalent to about 30 to 50, I think, 1080 TIs. Let's do our calculator. So that's 500 divided by 17. So that'd be 30 1080 TIs, and say a 1080 TI is $500. So if you needed, 
And so if you wanted to buy 30 1080 Ti's right now at $500 a piece, you'd end up paying around $15,000 for it. One CVP 13 is about $6,000. So you're getting a pretty good deal there. But again, it's, uh, it's all depending on what your risk tolerances are, what you think the future of mining is going to look like. Do you think it's going to be better to have 30 1080 Ti's or do you think it's going to be better to have one really powerful car that's only pulling, say, uh, less than a thousand watts because those 30 1080 ti's times 150 watts a piece you do the math i don't know what the math is you want to look like rain man uh it's going to pull a lot more than one fpga so in the longer term you're getting a uh, a piece of equipment that's made for industrial scale application it's not a gpu that's meant to be run for a few years by a uh, by a gamer on these peaks and valleys and then sort of trade it up for the next model it's uh it's all depending on how you take in all these factors all this information and then make that decision as to whether or not you want to proceed or just stay with gpus if you want some more updated information on fpga mining we've got a channel in our discord just go to discord.thetechnicals.io type that into your browser takes you straight in head down to the fpga channel in our discord check the description below for links to everything we talked about here today I'm the Technicals. See you next time.